Now, I'm interested in why Russia projects what it projects. Like, what's the message that Russia is trying to put out? Not because I believe that it's necessarily truthful, but because I want to understand why they're saying what they're saying, because they're doing it for a reason. So here we have this video in RT that came out yesterday. It says 100,000 Russian soldiers and 900 tanks. Kiev is alarmed by a massive offensive. And then they're going to show some video. Now, they're not showing Ukrainians being killed. Uh, but they are showing, they're, they're projecting the other side. We see a lot of video footage of uh, what Ukrainians are showing us and how here's, you know, a Ukrainians moving through. And this is actually the Russians targeting Ukrainians. No, you won't see any bloodshed or anything along those lines. But it's interesting to see why they're doing what they're doing. So let's hear and see what the Russians are projecting to show how awesome the mighty Russian army is. In the pauses between is when you move. There's no telling when the shells will start screaming in again. We are just... And so, so far, this seems like any other footage that you'll see with Ukrainians moving through the, the forest and whatever they're doing to try to not get killed themselves. So here's the uh, RT commentator talking about it. A few hundred meters away from Ukrainian positions. Okay, so what you're seeing here, they're going into this shelter. Now, a few days ago, I showed you this video, the counteroffensive, the whole truth. And in that video, you saw how there were lines of dragon's teeth, and then there were mines, and then there were entrenchments, and the entrenchments go back to some, some place that they could sleep and spend time being pretty protected. And you're seeing something that looks very much like that here. Found zero. <laughs> The uh, situation is such that Ukrainian troops have taken one of the forward trenches, small, relatively about 15, 20 meters across. But now uh, Russian airborne troops, considered elite, have arrived here and are ready to storm to assault the lost trench again. I was trying to show that he's in one of these kind of positions like the the Ukrainians would be out here, there's dragon's teeth, there's mines, there's artillery shooting down on here, and then there's these rows of trenches that are front trenches, and then he would be in one of these kind of back trenches. I don't know that he's actually there. Um, I don't think he has the guts to be that close to the front lines. That's just my personal opinion. I have no facts to verify that. I just, from what I've seen, they, they tend to make it look like they're somewhere and they're not necessarily there. But let's say they're, they would, he'd be in one of these kind of uh, positions at, at this point. Okay, now here is some drone footage of what's going on. Now, the drones are really interesting to me because, you know, think back to World War II. And when you wanted to get information about what was going on in World War II, you'd go to the movie theater and you'd see some newsreel before the movie that showed that there was some kind of this bombing or that strike or this uh, attack or whatever else. When you get to Vietnam, you see it on TV. Like in the in the news at, at six o'clock news, you'd see reports of what was going on in Vietnam. It got it was even more improved. I remember seeing things like round the clock on CNN during Desert Storm, I guess it was in 1991. And then now you see almost real time information about what's going on on the battlefield. And that includes drone footage. Drones have been a game changer. So now what's Earlier interesting this is morning, that Ukrainian. we're looking at drone positions and they're talking about because they can see, they can zoom in and use better artillery. Now drones weren't, you didn't have this visibility before. And so drones are a real game changer on the battlefield, but it's a game changer for the Russians, just like it is for the Ukrainians. I actually watched two drones fight. Like two drones try to, one drone tried to knock the other drone down. The first known drone dogfight in a war. Um, and what'll be really interesting will be to see if there ever becomes a capability where drones can actually knock other drones down, like use some kind of 
a, you know, a drone up in the sky using some kind of magnetic pulse to knock other drones down, that would be really significant in and game changing until the other side can catch up with this. I also want to point out this. Look at what this battlefield looks like. Look at the trees around the entrenchment. I mean, it looks like World War I out there. It's really, really remarkable to see. Okay, let's keep moving. And troops had assaulted that position. I mean, as they've panned out, I, it's just, it's really amazing. They're pulling out their dead. There are five Ukrainians in one spot. Come, take a look. There, they're carrying one of theirs in a bag, and these two. Are so he's looking at this through the through the, uh, just an iPhone on uh, my my sons. Actually, we, they're in Civil Air Patrol. They have used exactly these kinds of things. They use an iPhone or an iPad on the on the drone controller, and they can see exactly the same kind of thing because there's a um, a camera that is below that you can manipulate up and down and. Yeah, it, they're using the exact same thing. Now, these guys are looking at this going, <laughs> they're pulling out their dead. There's five guys right there. They're almost looking down at the Ukrainians for the way that their battle tactics are. When what the Russians do is often just leave their guys lying there. They don't understand the Ukrainians' view of human life. And just like I don't understand how the Russians can be so cold in their view of human life. Digging. As Russian artillery hit them, theirs hit back. The purpose of this seemingly aimless Ukrainian bombardment was to prevent a counterattack. They used everything. How it's Notice it felt like the commentator was actually there with him, but you didn't see the commentator at the time when the strikes were being on. You just saw the guy looking through the drone strike. That, that's why I'm suspicious about it because, well, anyway, I've seen other things that would cause me to be suspicious that he would actually be there. But look at the fortifications here now. Like, look at look at how, like, this is pretty uh, secure from, you know, small arms fire. As mortars and rockets. We even filmed one fly by. A recon squad of the 76th Airborne Division set to work quickly driving the Ukrainians into cover. It was too much. They broke. We watched as the surviving Ukrainian troops surrendered. Okay, One so they're showing surviving Ukrainians surrendering. This is what they want to broadcast for their Russian audience because see how awesome, big and bad the Russian army is. They won. They stumbled out with hands in the air. They were all taken in. Ours wasn't the only drone in the air. Ukrainian commanders, seeing their troops surrendering, must have ordered fire on their own soldiers. It wouldn't be the first time. Really? They're ordering fire on their own soldiers because they're surrendering? So that's a really interesting thing. The Ukrainians are not known for doing that, but the Russians are known for doing that as far back as World War II. So... That's interesting that they put that into the commentary. And this is something that I talked about yesterday in this video, how lies spread, where I'm talking about RT and the way that RT works. So one of the main things that RT wants to do is to push the idea that Western countries have as many problems as Russia or that they do these things that we do. And <laughs> that's exactly what's being carried in this narrative. Okay, uh, just a little bit more and we'll be done. The day was done. Dawn to dusk, it had been filled with explosive violence and bloodshed, and all for nothing. The front line had remained unchanged. Okay, that's another thing that they want to say. There's been no movement. They haven't been able to break us. We're that tough. Tomorrow, it would all begin again. Morad Gazdiev, RT from Kremenaya, Lugan. So that's what the Russians want their mostly Western audience because they're showing this in English. And this get passed down from RT to the Durant to the Scott Ritters and, and all the other pro-Russian commentators who are spreading this kind of message as if it's fact. So that's what you need to understand about why you should be watching this, not because you're trying to say, is this true or is that true? But because you're asking the question, why is Russia trying to send this particular message? And when you do that, you gain a wealth of insight. 
Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes. When you share these videos, it helps the algorithm tremendously. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.